All right, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Winnie Lubembe. Our sign anchor tonight is Joyce Wairimo. Now, Kenya has recorded seven new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours, raising the total number to 38. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe reiterated his stand over the measures aimed at curbing the deadly virus, which has so far claimed one person in the country. Jeff Kaimba kickstarts our bulletin tonight. A coronavirus pandemic continues to hit so hard the world, with Kenya striving as much as possible to contain the deadly virus. On Saturday, Kenya recorded seven new cases in the last 24 hours. Out of the 81 samples, we have received confirmation of seven people who have tested positive for the coronavirus disease. They include four Kenyans, two Congolese nationals, and one Chinese national. Three are female and four are males. The announcement by the Health Cabinet Secretary Mutei Kagwe comes even as the country intensified the measures to curb the virus, which has so far killed more than 26,000 people across the world, with more than 600,000 people infected. In Kenya, Nairobi County now tops the list of most affected cases. This now brings to 38 the number of those who have tested positive for the virus in Kenya. Out of the seven, four had a history of travel from countries with active transmission. One had traveled to Mombasa, or two did not actually have a travel history but come from contacts. Motei Kagwe, however, urged the Kenyans to adhere to the new cafe directive, which the police officers are applying for us to implement it. At this juncture, I'm appealing to our people to make it very unnecessary for them to engage with the police by staying at home and observing the directives given. I'm also urging our police the people should be treated humanely. Out of the more than a thousand close contact cases that were being monitored, 163 have been discharged after the 14-day follow-up period, and the government is presently monitoring about 978 people. To date, we have now tested 833 persons for the disease. As we informed you, from tomorrow, we shall embark on a mass testing for those persons who arrived in the country last week in our country and are currently under mandatory quarantine. This will be done in line with the World Health Organization guidelines on testing for the virus. Reporting for Ebro TV, I'm Jeff Haimba. Right. Thank you very much, Jeff Kwemba, for that. Now, the government has put up a raft of measures to ensure that the spread of the COVID-19 is curbed in the country, including urging the people to wash their hands with running water and soap, as well as to maintain high standards of hygiene, including etiquette as far as coughing and sneezing is concerned, and the latest one being the dusk to dawn curfew, which President Huru Kenyatta imposed, start, which started yesterday. But then again, is this enough? Is is this effective in curbing the spread of the deadly COVID-19 in the country? Well, earlier on, I had a sit down with Dr. Moses Masika, who is a virologist at the University of Nairobi. And of course, he just puts into perspective whether this curfew is effective in combating cases of COVID-19 in the country. Take a look. All right, so Dr. Masika, thank you very much for joining us um, this afternoon. So then we can just start with the basics, the numbers that we have in the country at the moment. So 31 confirmed, but 29 existing cases. What does this mean for Kenya and us Kenyans in general? Or what does this translate to? I think we had the first case two weeks ago. That's almost two cases per day. And um, it shows us that previously this was... Um, sounding like an infection out there in the world, prowling across China, Europe, and everywhere else, but not here. This 
is like brings the message home that all those myths that we had heard about Africans being immune, mm. that corona cannot survive in Africa, mm. are false. That we can get infected mm. and we should prevent ourselves from getting over the cliff where we get too many infections mm. to cope. Mm. And I think for me this is a clarion call that yes, we can get infected, mm. we are getting infected, mm. let us stop it now mm. before it spirals out of hand. Yeah, right. Should we get scared, really? Because there's some people who are still saying, you know what, um, no, this thing is it's still a hoax. It's not really, it's not yet in the country. And we're not taking the necessary precautions, um, you know, as far as just ensuring that then we do not, like the numbers stay at 29 and not, um, you know, exit the numbers. Yeah, I think you're, you're right. The people are not concerned at all. The people actually over scared. The people have panicked and they're actually moving into anxiety disorders and stress, which is not good. Yeah. We need a balance and the balance we need is one of showing concern and, and, and being able to take action. If you panic or if you don't get worried at all, then you may not take any action or you may take the wrong action. So I would say it's not time to be scared but we need to be concerned at this point and by concern I mean we all need to be mindful. COVID needs to be on everybody's mind, if not mouth, and we need to, in whatever actions we take, we need to think about, are we exposing ourselves? Are we exposing others? So that we stop the transmission. If we ignore, we are likely to put ourselves at risk and expose others. If we panic, we are likely to take actions that may worsen the, the, the situation. Yes. All right then, so we're told to stay at home. Um, if you don't really have to be in the office, you can still work from home. Yes. But then again, some people are taking this thing out of context. Um, some of them are actually getting more frustrated. They're saying, so what are we doing at home? Yes. Um, for we don't know how much um, longer. Yes. There's some people who are saying we need to go out there and work to earn our daily living to come and feed our children. Yes. And I'm pretty sure you've had some people say, I would rather die of corona than of hunger. Yes. Yeah. So then again, in terms of then what do we do during this period where we're told if you do not have to go to work, please stay at home. And yes. what are we supposed to do at home? Yes. I think this is a question that has a social angle and an economic angle. I am no expert at both, but I'll try and give it a, a shot. Right. What I think is that different people will, will be able to do different activities at, at home. Mm -hmm. There are those who can actually work from home okay. yeah. on their computer, mm -hmm. on their phone, mm -hmm. and, and uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. There are those who uh, may not be able to earn a living mm -hmm. from their homes. Mm -hmm. And so there are two things I think we, we need to do here. Mm -hmm. One is to engage our social networks that if you have a brother, a neighbor, a sister who needs your help, mm -hmm. and you've been communicating before, I'm sure, you should be willing to assist them for the time being. Mm -hmm. But we, sh we should also engage the um, representatives, the local MCAs, mm -hmm. the local people's representatives, mm -hmm. to try and, so that they can get an idea of how big the crisis is, mm -hmm. that uh, the people who are not able to, say, earn a living, yeah. make uh, something for their food, mm -hmm. and maybe this way we can a push for some sort of uh, population-based uh, solution yeah. for such problems. Yeah. Because I think so far it's been very difficult to quantify actually how many people can actually um, earn a living from home and be able to provide food for their families. Mm -hmm. But these social networks mm -hmm. plus the political networks mm -hmm. should be able to address this issue, okay. maybe not immediately, mm -hmm. but at least with some, uh, to be able to sustain people mm -hmm. for the long term. Because if this situation we are in is not going to end in a week. Okay. It's going to take a little longer, uh, maybe months. Okay. So we need to be ready for it. Okay. Uh, for the activities for doing when people are indoors, I think there are many. Yeah. You could have uh, things that help you relax, mm. exercise indoors or even outside your small mm. uh, space, mm. uh, reading, music, whatever you like doing. But we need to avoid crowds indoors. Yeah. There are people who are also organizing social meetings in their houses either for different reasons. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that if such mm -hmm. gatherings are to be held, mm -hmm. there are only two, three or four people, yeah. and depending on the size of the house, right. so that we don't transfer the risk from the street mm -hmm. to, the, to the house. Yeah. Yes. All right, and, and then the aspect of curfew. Um, there's some people who say, well, this is not the right move um, yes. for the government to, to do. Yes. Well, there's some people who, I mean, another school of thought will be like, well, but this one helps in one way or the other in yes. the prevention or the spread yes. 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 of the COVID-19. So, one, one of the things I liked about Kenyans this time is that mm -hmm. they were asking for the government to explain um, the measures that they are taking, which yes. is a good thing. Because mm -hmm. when the public understands why the government is doing what it's doing, yeah. they may be more uh, compliant. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. true that for some people it wasn't clear 
how the curfew mm. would help. Would it's help a virus it. transmitted at night and things like that. Yeah. But I think a day before yesterday, mm. um, the, P, the CS, mm. Tahi Kagwe, mm -hmm explained what informed the decision the to yeah. check a curfew. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that there has been shown that a lot of mm -hmm. young people especially yeah. who are currently driving the infection mm -hmm. are meeting in social places at night, at night. and that uh, is a risk. And it's mm -hmm. true that many times in the evenings uh, people tend to gather together, mm -hmm. even in, in the countryside, yes. for at least a few hours in the evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and this explanation also was good coming from the CS, mm -hmm. because I think he was responding to the need he had seen from the public. Mm -hmm. And also gives him a challenge that every time they may bring in new measures, mm -hmm. they need to explain to the public mm -hmm. why they are undertaking such measures. Okay. So maybe that way the public will play along. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I would say, from the explanation, mm -hmm. I was satisfied. It may not be uh, the most effective measure given the challenges we saw yesterday mm -hmm. but I think if we are more organized about it how to get people home mm -hmm. our public transport systems mm -hmm. we need to get a little organization in that mm -hmm. then it may actually uh, begin to uh, get Kenyans mm -hmm. used yes. to staying indoors okay. and if we ever need to go further and lock down for a day mm -hmm. it will be easier for a person who was coming yeah. home earlier now to mm -hmm. decide now mm -hmm. today really uh, you can stay indoors. Yeah. So I think yeah. for me, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's the lesson I think we need to learn from here is that mm -hmm. even as the government comes up with new measures, mm -hmm. it needs to get buy-in from the public, okay. not bully them into ac accepting. And the first step yes. of doing that is to explain to them why they mm -hmm. have proposed certain yeah. measures. All right. And then again, um, yesterday, especially being the first day of the curfew, yes. um, there are so many people who, one, were crowded at the bus stations. Um, mm because they're like fine so it's it's about time yes. um it's almost time you know to the curfew and we're still um either in town in mombasa we saw a lot of people yes. you know at the ferry so can we talk about then does this pose um more risk or is it more dangerous having people you know crowded at the same place yes. at a specific time yes. trying yes. to get home but really there's no, there's no the, the, the disorganization yesterday really exposed our achilles mm -hmm. uh, hill mm -hmm. that our public transport systems are not dependable okay, okay. and uh, I mean even the police who are trying to mm -hmm. fight COVID-19 ended yeah. up fighting the public the and people. and and um, bundling them together mm. with uh, no concern for social distancing okay. at all, all right. and I think it, it, it makes us now think as mm. to how to effect this curfew mm. Mm. so employers who are still required uh, requiring the employees to come to work so need to rearrange their shifts okay. so that we don't all meet at the public mm. service vehicle at the same time okay. and even people who are doing businesses need to rearrange their hours mm. so that they can fit within uh, these times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now that means also people are going to buy things either mm. for food or for other reasons you need to buy different items for your house or your, mm. your people mm. we need to rearrange those hours mm -hmm. so that we are more organized yeah. during the day okay. we can do so much more and then begin to travel earlier or rather mm. than wait until mm. the last minute to travel right. but i think our public health system our public uh, transport system mm. is uh, in very bad shape right. and right. that that uh, could contribute to mm. a lot of uh, hiccups in mm. implementing this curfew right. hopefully with time mm -hmm. uh, we'll see better mm -hmm. uh, treatment from the police mm. who from yesterday's um, scenario mm. were more of a problem than a yeah. help to, because to then the we don't want people to start resisting the police. All we right. want them to cooperate with the police. With the police yeah. And the way they treated people yesterday does not elicit mm. cooperation, mm. it elicits mm. resistance. Yeah. So I would say um, in, in the way we implemented the curfew, mm -hmm. wasn't, um, as in wasn't perfect. Okay. But I'm hoping that for the next few days, gonna, we see, we see change, it yeah. moving more smoothly. Yeah, so that yes. again, we don't have a lot of people crowding Yes. at a place because then that risks um you know yes, yes you know yes. from one percent i see even some vehicles from the news coverage yesterday mm. were carrying now extra yeah, people which yeah. means we are losing the reason that we wanted this the coffee in the coffee, first place yeah. all right then so as we finish um do you feel fine there's a lot of directives that have been given by the government so many plans um yes. again in so that we fight or combat COVID 19 but in terms of then the healthcare system as a country, Air Force being a medical profession, a professional, do you feel we are somewhere? Because I mean, our health system is weak. Um, and it's not yes, only in yes, Kenya, but yes. Africa as a, content, a mm. continent. But then again, so as of now, with all the measures, because the president said um, some amount of money will be channeled towards um, you know, getting more health workers on the same, will that help? Yes. Are we in a better place to fight COVID-19? We are in a better place. Mm -hmm. There are things we've done well, there are things that still have gaps. 
One that we've done very well is the, at least the policies or the interventions for social distancing that employers have been told to let workers go home uh, earlier or work from home that we've been informed about cleaning our hands mm -hmm. and our surfaces, mm -hmm. that we've taken the effort to isolate contact. I mean, people who are sick and mm -hmm. quarantine those who are contacts of the sick. I think that's been very good. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for, for us to continue controlling or containing the situation, mm -hmm. we need to trace all contacts, mm -hmm. keep them in one place. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that they were able to implement the quarantine for people who are traveling to the country mm -hmm. so that they can assess them. Mm -hmm. We also need to invest a little more in the healthcare workers mm -hmm. because across the country, mm -hmm. the healthcare workers are not where they were when we started this. But there are still many that feel mm -hmm. a lot more needs to be done, mm -hmm. especially for supplies yeah. and also readiness. So to, to make sure that this person feels confident mm -hmm. that if there is a case in Mandera or wherever, mm -hmm. they are ready to go in and help that person. Mm -hmm. So I think that is... Um, probably going need to get better. I don't know how they'll do it because globally there's a crisis, supplies and mm -hmm. getting these things takes time. Yeah. But that's a place where mm -hmm. people across the country feel uh, a bit, uh, especially healthcare workers, mm -hmm. don't uh, feel a bit uh, unprepared. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, enough measures, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people pushing for a lockdown. Personally, I think we've locked down as much as we can. Okay. We, If we go further, mm -hmm. we'll be over reacting. Okay. So the risk as it is now doesn't demand for a lockdown and that's why I say that the measures have been undertaken so far mm -hmm. have been enough at least on the public front. Okay. And uh, the reason I say that is because we lockdown has other implications mm -hmm. that could work against uh, the health we are trying to protect. Okay. So if we do go into lockdown too early or unnecessarily mm -hmm. then we are risking losing mm -hmm. already what um, we have protected because then people can actually now just uh, decide uh, to, to, to anarchy and just go, move back into the streets without control. But <clears throat> there is also an element that I'm not qualified to speak about but I think we need to take care of and that is the economic and the social bit. That is true that a lot of our people are not able to earn when they stay at home. That they will not be able to pay their rent, pay for their bills and get food. I I, I saw there were a raft of measures on taxes and um, other rebates mm -hmm. that people were given, mm -hmm. but they may not get to the informal sector. Okay. So I feel uh, we still need to look for more solutions mm -hmm. that will respond to this need okay. because this is where the heaviest weight is yes. going to be felt. Yeah, yeah. actually yeah. the COVID-19 crisis mm -hmm. is going to hit more on these social and economic mm -hmm. aspects yeah. than it will hit our, our health, health because system. we know most of us, even if we get infected, will survive. Yeah. So as I said, I'm not qualified to propose economic yeah. interventions, yeah. but I think the problem is mm -hmm. the people who cannot mm -hmm. earn a living, mm -hmm. who cannot afford food, mm -hmm. uh, if they stay at home. Yeah. We still need to think about how to help those people. All right. Yes. Okay, Dr. Masika, thank you very much uh, for making time for us to just discuss some of these ways, uh, ways that the government has put in place to ensure that we curb the cases of um, COVID-19. So really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, and basically what we're saying is make sure that you follow some of these guidelines that the government has set aside, especially in terms of, um, you know, maintaining social distancing, which is very, very important. But most importantly, make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water as often as you can. But in the event that you cannot or in a place where there's no water and soap, then feel free to sanitize. And at the end of the day, let's help together fight the spread of the COVID-19. So on that note, we're taking a very short break when we come back more stories including business and sports stay with us All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Now, the busy Machakos town was totally deserted on in day one, rather, of the curfew. A few minutes to the curfew, police cars patrolled different roads in the town with siren to alert members of the public to vacate the town before 7 p.m. Kindo of Stefano paints the picture for us. Police presence could tell it was not business as usual. Only security guards and filling stations attendants were seen in the town during the curfew. Police cars patrolled different roads of the town 
with siren to alert members of the public to vacate the town before 7 p.m. A few people who defied the orders were arrested. A visit in the slums area of Mbini and Kariobangi in Machakos town revealed the meaning of a curfew. We could only see goats roaming in the area, unlike in the past when people transacted business 24 hours. In Tala town, residents were seen walking home as early as 6 p.m. Then police presence was seen from 7 p.m. A few residents who spoke to us urged the government to provide some necessities to the locals, claiming they work from hand to mouth and the curfew will leave them starving. Sisi kama wana inji, tumeona venye serikali meeka mkakati ya kuenda nyumbani samoja, curfew si tunati, waja tuenda nyumbani tujikinge, watu wakue salama, na mi chenye nanza ambia watu watala, tukue safe, tukaya nyumbani, kifika samoja, kila mtu wakue kwa nyumba. Leo tumefanyua makota sana. Tunaenda nyumbani mapema, hata watoto wetu watashituka wata leo kumeenda haji ya sokoni. Kuna kitu moja inatusumbua tala. Hii tala, sawa, tumekewa hiyo kafiu, lakini tuangalia hawa tuwa matatu, manake hawa tuwa matatu, hiyo time ya saa kumna mbili, ama saa moja, ndi wanabeba watu wakipeleka tala. Na wakipeleka, tala, wakipeleka Nairobi, ndi wanapata pesa. Kama hii kafiu tumekewa na sirikari yetu, inatuafekti sana kwa sababu saa hii kazi imesimama, Fanyikazi wa dogo wa dogo kama mama kuza mboga, fanyikazi wa boda boda na hawa vijana tunavuta mkoteni. Wengi wa hako kazi. Kwa hivyo tunaomba hii serikali, itufanyie kama vile inji zingine zinafanyiwa. Tunaomba serikali ya uru mwegei kenyata, itusaidie kwa sababu maisha imekuwa ngumu. Reporting for Ebru TV, I'm Kaindo Stefano. All right, thank you very much, kind of Stefano, for that. Very interesting. Someone says, All right. Now, elsewhere, the government has begun the distribution of free sanitizers countrywide as part of measures to curb the spread of coronavirus that has killed one person and infected 37 others. The sanitizers labeled not for sale will be available at the deputy county commissioners and chiefs offices countrywide where Kenyans are required to collect them. The government said it decided to produce the free sanitizers whose prices skyrocketed due to demand. East African Breweries Limited is among firms that undertook to distribute the sanitizers to the public after production by Hako Industries. Kenya on Thursday recorded its first fatality from coronavirus. A 66-year-old man who passed on at the Aga Khan Hospital's intensive care unit. Now, Naivasha Subcounty Security Committee and Disaster Management has now outlawed Matatus from accessing the Central Business District in a bid to fight the coronavirus pandemic. Hawkers and conductors have also been banned from accessing Matatu Termini as part of the measures put in place to address the spread of the disease. This was arrived at following a crisis meeting held in the town and attended by security officers, health officials and Matatu operators around the town. We are in a very serious situation as a county and uh, we are calling for the governor now to take drastic measures and to immediately present to the assembly a supplementary budget so that we are able to respond to the emergency that is before us. He termed the current situation as serious, adding that the operators would have no option to adhere to the guidelines set by the government. We have reached the point where we have reached the Earlier, the operators had defied orders to leave the CBD for Naivasha Stadium, terming this as unattainable and far away from the town. The county has been urged to table a budget for isolation centers and other medical amenities to be put in place. We need to do isolation centers uh, in different sub-counties so that we are able to prepare ourselves on how we are going to respond on this emergency of COVID-19. According to Naivasha Subcounty Commissioner Matthew Yambogo, 
Anyone who defies the orders will face the full wrath of the law. On curfew, Mbogo said that they had enough officers drawn from various arms of the government, including prisons, to enforce the directive. Amuli metorea na rais kutakuwa na kafio kuanzia saa moja jioni mpaka saa kumi na moja asubuhi. Tafadhalini muweze kuwa maunyumbani ma mwenu ikifika saa kumi na mbili na nusu. Kuanzia saa moja we utakuwa na mepatikana inje na upeani hunduma muhimu ambao zimeweza kupeano pale. We utakuwa mgenu wetu katika police stations ambao tukwa nazo. The chairman of matatu operators in Naivasha Stephen Mungai said that they had no other option but to agree to the new directives so as to contain the spread of the virus. Reporting for Ebro TV, I'm Kindo Stefano. A section of Kenyans are living in fear following the outbreak of COVID-19 coupled with the economic crisis, even as employers move to reduce the number of employees. The viral infection, which has claimed one person in the country, has seen an upsurge in cases forcing the government to impose a curfew as a way to contain the situation after 38 cases have been confirmed. Our reporter Jeff Khemba returns with more details on that story. It's a hard moment for the Kenyans whose majority are struggling to put food on the table. As the number of the coronavirus patients shoots, Kenyans are living in despair and thinking very hard on whether the deadly coronavirus shall spread further and follow the route of Italy, the USA and other superpower nations which are overwhelmed in containing the virus. And we are seeing a scenario which no one has ever envisioned in the globe. And it's, a, it's coming with a very high impact on our mental wellness. Mm -hmm. uh, largely because, one, our sources of income are grinding a halt. Very many people actually are not sure when their next paycheck is going to come. Mm -hmm. That's a true reality. Mm -hmm. There's the reality of being in isolation, being in the house in a small space, mm -hmm. uh, without being able to socialize, knowing that we are social beings as human beings. Mm -hmm. There's that challenge of just being there on your own. There is a challenge with the people who live with mental illness themselves. Being cocooned and being in a space of uncertainty can come also with, the, with a lot of challenges when it comes to our mental wellness. Uh, Sylvia Kasanga, who is a mental health expert, says uh, the coronavirus crisis and the restrictive measures that many countries are taking uh, to continue the outbreak can have a negative impact on people's mental health and well-being. Let's also not forget the fact that there's so much information we are being bombarded with, mm -hmm. so much information with all the social media. Mm -hmm. And every time you go to the social media, you raise your anxiety levels, and that can cause you a lot of anxiety and distress and stress. And stress can lead to even depression and many other things. So we are, we are seeing a scenario where we are all actually very vulnerable when it comes to mental health. And we need to be aware of the situation that we are in so that we know how then to mitigate uh, the issues that we we are going to be encountering in the next few months as we wait for the situation to unfold. The most worried lot are the coastal people, where Kilifi County Deputy Governor Gideon Saburi is said to have mingled with the thousands of the residents. We also know our health system, the capacity is not there. These are facts, these are true scenarios. And what the government then should be telling Kenyans more and more is the fact that we only have X number of beds to deal with only the ones who are going to be extremely, extremely unwell. Okay. The rest of you, you have to learn to take care of yourselves. Okay. How do you take care of yourselves? What are the symptoms if you should see them? At what point then should you go to hospital when you, when you know that then you're critical? Almost more than 60 people interacted with the Catholic priest who tested positive for the coronavirus in Unguja, in his account in Nairobi, are our Lord. It is, it is very hard. We are social beings. It is not an easy thing. I would never wish it upon any of my enemies that they would be in a self-quarantine situation for 14 days. It is very, very, very tough. Because even for those who are even in a home and in a family and you yourself are exposed, you're supposed to sit in your bedroom, for instance, and stay there. It is not easy. It is calling upon us as human beings now to think beyond what we are used to. Wow. This was the picture of the coast where the police officers roughed up the residents who are said to have violated the orders.
They are the Kenyans living hand to mouth and striving so hard to earn a living. Part of the mandatory requirements imposed to the suspect of the coronavirus cases include being quarantined and for 14 days in isolation. For many say living in the self-quarantine and social distancing from the family, friends and the co-workers is one of the biggest hurdles. A report for Ebro TV, I'm Jeff Haimba. Now, tourism stakeholders are predicting losses worth tens of millions should coronavirus continue spreading across the world. The projection comes at a time when different countries continue to adopt measures that restrict global traveling to combat the spread of the disease. Expeditions Masai Safari Chief Executive Officer Pankras Karema says they have already lost millions since the government announced Kenya's first case in early March. He added that the curfew implemented yesterday has further seen cancellation and postponement of travel by potential clients who fear for their security should they fail to be home at the stipulated time. The pandemic has seen some hotels close temporarily, sending staffers home while others have nothing but empty hotel beds. The government says that it's setting aside 500 million shillings to be used as post-coronavirus recovery plan. Tourism Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala said the monies will be used for events to market Kenya once the spread of the virus is contained globally. Tourism remains a key foreign exchange earner for the country. In 2019, earnings for the sector increased by 4% to hit $163 billion, compared to $157.4 billion recorded in 2018. In light of these events, the Serena Group of Hotels have shut down various outlets of their hotels countrywide. For Ibru News, I'm Musa Amir. Let's play now. Now, the Nairobi Athletics meeting, the first league of the World Athletics Continental Tour, due May 2nd, has been postponed to September this year in view of curbing the spread of the coronavirus. Nairobi's res director, Barnaba Korir, says they had reached a consensus with the Continental Tour director and directors from nine other events through a teleconference meeting. Korir says that the exact dates of the race in Nairobi and other legs will be announced later, basing on the other athletics events that will be held that month. The tour forms the second tier of international one-day meetings after the Diamond League and will feature 200 meter, 3,000 meter steeple chase discuss, hammer and triple jump events already removed from the Diamond League from 2020. Now elsewhere, World Athletics President Sebastian Koi has warned athletes that stringent anti-doping controls will continue despite the world having been thrown into a, a tailspin by the coronavirus pandemic. Now Koi says the priority of the World Athletics governing body is to ensure that athletes get back to a safe competition zone, adding that consultations were in progress on how to put together the calendar created by the rescheduling of the Tokyo Olympics Games to next year. Now, Blues manager Frank Lampard says Chelsea winger Kalam Hudson Odoi is fully recovered from the COVID-19. The England international 19 became the first Premier League player to test positive for COVID-19 earlier this month. Lampard says he spoke to him throughout that first week when the teenager first got the illness and it was a strange time. Chelsea were fourth in the Premier League when elite football in England was suspended on 13th March. And that marks the end of Ebru News, primetime news. Thank you very much for staying with us. Remember to stay home and stay safe. Keep yourself, your loved ones, and of course everyone around you safe from COVID-19. My name is Winnie Lubembe. On behalf of an amazing team who put together this bulletin, not forgetting our sign anchor tonight, Joyce Wairimu. We wish you a lovely night. Up next is the weather forecast. Stay safe.